Good evening. Um, just been mucking around with the settings trying to get everything sorted. Right, a couple of conversation pieces for tonight. Piano's going loud. Right, uh, welcome to Mixed Mad, Mad Moments again. Right, uh, first thing on the news, uh, can't really miss it. Everyone's affected by it. Petrol prices. Right, uh, petrol prices have been going up through the roof. Uh, I, th I think it was one pound fifty. I think it, uh, I think that was that was yet yesterday night. Last time I saw it, one pound fifty. It's probably gone up since then. I know down in the south it's been approaching nearly one pound seventy. So and I, I even heard of one which is one ninety nine. I was like, that oh, what? Um, a bit strange because surely the government don't they tax heavily on fuel? They could reduce it if they wanted to. You know, I'm just saying. Right, um, I also th I also watched a program about alternative fuels, which was interesting. The bloke in Brazil, it's brilliant. He's built himself a little, I'm going to call it a chariot, uh, and it's steam powered. And he goes sets off on his travels, and he goes with his with his little with his little thing, his little steam powered chariot, and he runs out of, out of steam. So he pulls over. Uh, he goes and gets some twigs from from the floor from the forest. Puts them into the back, lights them up to get his thing. Uh, he gets his, his he, then because he's he's clever, uh, and and then he gets his sausages out, whittles some skewers, and puts them into the fire in the back as well, while he's parked up so he's cooking his dinner, and then he gets his bottle of water out and his cobs, uh, buns, baps, whatever you want to call them, hollows them out, these baps, eats this soft stuff, but then he puts his sausages in the fire cooks them on little hangers uh, and so he sat there eating his sausages fires going away getting the steam pressure up uh, he gets his water out as a drink of his water puts some more water in the top of the tank as well to in the tank to get steam pressure up and then uh, eats his sausages brilliant and then while he's had his dinner he puts his stuff in his little rack at the back of him taps his pressure fit pressure pipe make sure he's got enough pressure and psh, 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 off he goes down the road Brilliant idea, you know. He's he's lucky he's living. In, I mean, we get told off for that because you're burning natural stuff, but he's burning kindling. What's living in the forest? Uh, what, what what he's found in the forest? So I thought, brilliant that. I thought, hold on. In thirties and forties and later and earlier, because I'm not exactly sure about time timeline. Didn't we have cars with gas things, gas bags on top, that used to run the cars? Gas, when I'm saying gas, is natural gas, not like American gas, which is short for gasoline. Okay, so we're talking about gas, gas, butane gas, helium gas, not helium. Because then you, if your car were going around, it would go. <laughs> right, so, but we used to have them, because I remember seeing pictures on old pictures. And I thought, whatever happened to those ideas? Because uh, if you've got an electric car, the ones without the eaters, they're not much good in winter, is it? But. If you've got an electric car, it all comes from one, I believe most of the compound for the battery comes from one mountain in Africa. And when that's gone, it's gone. So you're going to be, again, you're going to be short of commodity to do it. So even then, you've still got to produce the electricity to actually charge the battery up. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. Uh, but we're going to find out in about 10 years. Uh, and also, the E numbers that bring you petrol, which everyone asked about the other uh, the, when that war about four, four, three or four months ago, I think it was now. I found out that that stuff, that additive that I just says, oh, put it in, yeah, carry on putting it in because you can't take it out of it. It's actually not very good for your engine. Um, so, in a way, it's actually helping get rid of the engines, these lean burn engines. Um, so that you have to bring in the electric cars even better. So there we go. So interesting. It's interesting. You know, additives to petrol, which used to be lead, which leads me on to the second point. Uh, the second point I wanted to fetch up was an interesting thing about. It's not space today. It's actually about the Antarctic, and uh, the ship's been going around the Antarctic for a long time. Expeditions, and the latest expedition has found uh, HMS Endurance, which is the ship that Ernest Shackleton went to the, I think it's South Pole, uh, Antarctica with, and uh, basically got trapped in the ice. 
and the ice pushed in and it was a wooden ship and it, and it crushed the ship and the ship sank but the crew got off and they went on, carried on to try their it wasn't a very successful journey but they tried on with the journey i think it's the south pole going uh, you'll have to look you gonna have to check get the kids out and check that one up check backs up on that one but i know it's with ernest shackleton's and it's the endurance okay so you're gonna have to you can do a bit of own work you can find out what it is anyway so the, they showed you the picture of the, the ship it's a wooden ship it's in perfect condition you can see it's been crushed in the middle but it's actually in perfect condition it's not like a what would you think of a record just bits and bobs it's like if you brought it back up push the sides out a bit you could probably sail it again that's how good good it is it's because it's so cold now what's the link with lead you're asking now the link with lead is that some years ago they actually went to uh, a like a staging post for that exhibition uh, ex, ex, expedition not exhibition expedition they found the staging post and they found some of the dead sailors they'd been buried and they were entombed in ice so they actually brought them up they exhumed the bodies and they found that they hadn't died of cold which people thought they'd actually died of lead poisoning now the reason they died of lead poisoning was because it was the early time early t days of tinning putting food in tins and uh, they used to seal it with lead and they obviously when they've been opening up the, the tins they've been cracking bits of lead in there as well with beans and sausage and whatever they were eating and that's what's actually killed them lead poisoning which is interestingly enough linked to ancient rome so there's always links to different things uh, in ancient rome the waterways uh, of rome brought the water from the mountain down through the through the through the uh, get the name of it now uh, through the water system into the fountains and everything like that and um, everyone thought that a lot of Romans died of lead poisoning because there was lead pipes in sections of the waterway which strange as it may seem over a thousand years ago supplied six times more water than modern modern Rome has with modern pumps etc they did it by gravity anyway so they went well how did they die they must have died from the lead pipes turns out it wasn't the lead pipes false flag what it was was the wine they drank an awful lot of wine in rome now when you seal the wine bottles up they were using lead as a sealer to make sure it's waterproof uh, but the problem is that lead and red wine do not mix very well it actually sort of like the lead seeps into the wine is absorbed into the wine over, over a period uh, and that is actually why a lot of Romans died from lead poisoning they were drinking too much wine so that's an interesting fact so and on that one there's a couple of interesting facts nice little bit of nice bit of some bright news lead poisoning uh, you know so uh, but a bit of history and everything wrote it <laughs> so <laughs>